Hey, welcome back to another quick episode. Just working on the lights here. Got them for the most part figured out. Here's the unlock and lock. Of course, the other side is the same. Let's put the grill on. It's not fully installed, just to kind of see how it's looking. And you can see, if I try to put the hood down on the third gens, this piece is higher where the fender mounts. But on here, obviously, it's going to hit the hood how it was designed. And the hole is a little lower. So how do you accomplish that? Well, I just used a heat gun and I bent this plastic down. It's not super perfect and super pretty, but as you can see, the holes are pretty much lined up. So that means I still get to use this without having to create a metal bracket that would have faced it when it was like that. Instead, I can just put a screw through here, bolt it, and I got that out of their mounting point. Of course, the grill, you can see it's not pushed all the way back in, but it goes on there. Gets a little, I might make a mount that goes here. They provided the lower mount. That's what these kind of angled brackets are that look like this. I think it just mounts on this on this brace and then I'll kind of push up under here to, to raise the headlight up because it's sitting a little low, but that's a whole nother project to make sure everything's fitting together at the end. But as far as wiring goes, I'll kind of go over it and show you how it works. Let me take this back apart. I'll show you the part numbers to put the third gen headlights on a second gen setup. But so far, it looks pretty good and everything functions. So yeah, let me rip it apart. We'll take a look at the back. All right, got the headlight back down. First one to start is gonna be this part number, which takes care of the side marker. So here's the original from the second gen. And there's a little teeny plastic piece that fits in there to kind of lock it from, uh, I guess there's these little pins. It's very difficult to see, but they, those little tabs in there hold the metal terminals. And then you just toggle them up with something like this dental pick. After you pop this out, slides right out. Once again, use a dental pick. And then the exact same wires, you just pop out and then they slide right inside of there and lock in. They have a similar pin. The only difference, of course, is how the little plastic tabs are designed on this third gen side marker piece. I think possibly this could still fit if you were to just trim these off. I mean, a wire is a wire, so <laughs> either way, this is the correct way to do it snaps right in these are in nice it's now perfectly good so that's for the side marker the blinker functionality which is this switch you'll see it has a three pin that is identical so from the third and second gen it's the exact same just plug it in done and then the biggest quote unquote hassle is the high low beam, which are marked as you see. Now I ordered these two parts from Toyota, or Doorman actually makes them. Doorman, 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 Doorman! But Toyota makes them as well, whichever price you wanna pay for the same exact thing of plastic, up to you. I know. The only difference in these is the color, honestly, they're identical. Uh, I used the black for the high beam and the gray for the low on both sides just so I could remember when I unplug and replug. The only thing to note about this is on the low beam, the blue is the ground, the gray is the live wire. Whereas this, you have white and black for the high beam. Guess what, black, ground, white, live wire. Uh, not sure why. I know some places white's ground. Um, if you work on 
BMWs ever. They kind of switch it up. But regardless, this is how they did it for this. So when you get your second gen wiring, you have on this side, your ground, white and black, of course. And then you have this white on red. What'd you say? You can't have a pie without Cool Whip. Cool Whip. And then black on red. And as you can see, black on red for low, white on red for high. You wire them together. You tap them both to the same ground. And that's that. Now I have fully functioning plug in, good to go. It's a little different on the right headlight. The only thing to note different is the wiring harness here is yellow on red and that goes to the low and then there's this what they call pink it's just kind of a red as well but they refer to it as pink in the wiring diagram and that's your high beam same thing they both connect to the ground and everything else is identical function wise on the right side besides the colors the only other thing is if you want to have the daytime running lights, which comes with the Alpha Rex setup, you have to tap in. They recommend tapping into the EFI. Uh, they, they just say, do the EFI on the uh, video. So just, I found the EFI for the second gen. It's obviously not the same pin, but here it is. You add the new fuse into the EFI. It's kind of like a daisy chain that they provide that goes to the the box down here, the little controller. And then that has the wires that I will route and cleanly clean up and it goes right into this little wire here, as you can see. And that is your daytime running lights. So yeah. If there's any questions leave a comment if you are planning on doing something like this and you need help wiring uh, if you do cross these you will blow a fuse so either buy a circuit protector um, or, or a circuit that resets anytime you do electronics you could just reset it uh, or just have a whole bunch of 10 10 amp fuses minis of course for this setup this is your red row right here of tens this is pretty much your high and low left and right uh, functionality there so anyway if you do uh cross wire or have problems really the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to blow some fuses and waste some money so that's that let me throw this back on the truck we'll uh turn on the lights check it out the only other problem is the resistor for the led blinker it's doing the fast blink, I'll show you. Uh, that's gonna be under the car is my understanding. Under the dash, I mean, up on top of this fuse panel is the blinker relay. It's like way up on top. Uh, so you gotta pull off this lower dash, a couple screws, it's not that big of a deal. And then swap in something like this. Mm hmm but yeah this is a electronic flasher this will allow leds um not sure if this one will work i have this from a motorcycle project i did but either way regardless i've seen another version where you just drill out the solder that tells them to blink like that because you know it's just a function to tell you that your your blinker's out or one of them's not working uh, for all I know, it's just doing that because the rear is not plugged in. So I'll test that as well. We'll see if it's still a problem, but I'll put it back together real quick and we'll check it out. I forgot to put in the crystals. All right, here it is. Come up to your truck, unlock it, get in, put the key in. All right, ready to drive around. I really want to put on the lights because it's dark. All right, there's kind of the parking lights and then low beam, high beam, and 
and the fast blink, the tail lights are plugged in, so it is going to need to be uh, sorted with the resistor. Hazards work just fine. All right, let's see it from this side. All right, here we go. DRLs are on. This is the parking lights. Kind of get that LED flicker on the camera, different speeds. All right, low beams, high beams, flasher function, speed blinkers. I'll deal with that later. Looks good. All right, thanks for watching this little short episode, y'all. Next, we'll work with those uh, Total Chaos bed siphoners on the rear. Next episode, we'll install those. And then from there, start finishing the bodywork and really planning out everything else. Paint, sliders, bumpers. Yeah, it's coming along. Thanks for watching once again. See y'all next time.